Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Mr. James Mission this segment. He's joining us here as CEO of 22nd Century Group. 22nd Century Group is a leading agricultural biotechnology company. He's joining us to talk about the company's commitment and mission to improving human health with reduced nicotine, tobacco, hemp, cannabis, and hops, advanced plant technology. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, James Mish. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, uh, thank you, Neil, for having me. Pleasure to be here. CEO of 22nd Century Group, give us a little look into your professional background be- briefly, and then tell us about 22nd Century. Sure. My background, I come out of the pharmaceutical industry uh, early in my career in research and development. And uh, then I spent about uh, you know over 35 years in the uh, specialty ingredients uh, area, uh, both in uh, large corporations and privately held uh, businesses and private equity. Uh, and all those had uh, something in common. It was uh, based on ingredients or technology that had uh, you know huge scientific and intellectual property value, and uh, would really service uh, health and wellness in some way whether it's pharmaceutical-based uh, or uh, consumer health-based uh, over the years, and uh, uh, followed that path uh, through a variety of uh, different functions on the operation side and eventually uh, ended up as CEO of uh, 22nd Century, uh, which was a great fit. Uh, it uh, continues to uh, stress the science uh, behind uh, biotechnology, plant-based biotechnology, and it's really a uh, ingredients and uh, ser- solutions provider uh, to a wide variety of end use markets, including consumer products uh, such as uh, low nicotine cigarette market, but also into uh, health and wellness areas such as personal care, uh, food, beverage, nutritional supplements, uh, etc. So it was a great fit for me uh, coming into uh, 22nd century and its uh, mission of, uh, of harm reduction that we'll get into uh, as well. Now, I've heard rumors and, and whisperings of governmental requirements for cigarette manufacturers to produce lower nicotine content cigarettes. Uh, tell us about this commitment to make a cigarette with what I understand to be 95% less nicotine than what we're currently smoking. You know, the whispers have turned into shouting from the uh, Biden administration announcement uh, as of uh, just this past Friday. But the, you know, the foundation of the company was uh, based on a visionary of the founder back in the late 90s. He was selling herbal-based uh, cigarettes uh, that weren't doing quite well. But he kept on hearing about, from his uh, potential customers and customers about the desire to have a low nicotine cigarette to help them quit smoking. But one that would taste like a combustible cigarette, a normal cigarette, quote-unquote, uh, would, uh, would have the same experience, uh, but of course would have low nicotine. So he set off back in the 90s to develop the technology, and he did. Within uh, two years, uh, through gene editing of the uh, plants in association with the University of Kentucky and University of North Carolina State, uh, he developed the uh, the technology and, and wrapped a uh, very deep uh, intellectual property moat around it. And then began the process uh, with the FDA as the FDA was taking over the the control of uh, cigarettes to get uh, two FDA authorizations required to sell the product. One is a pre-manufacturing notice, a PMTA, uh, which the company took uh, 15 plus years, uh, very much like a pharmaceutical development process, to get the uh, PMTA in place about three years ago. And then uh, the more challenging one, which is a modified risk tobacco product authorization from the FDA that allows you to put a marketing claim on it. So it would be otherwise it would be like selling Diet Coke without being able to put the word diet on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, through a lot of effort and in collaboration with uh, working with the FDA on this process and our application, uh, we got the MRTP in December and uh, launched the product into a Chicago pilot uh, market uh, just uh, about two months ago now. So it is on the market, it's available today. And not only did FDA give us the claims that we wanted around reduced nicotine, which is the science, but they also mandate on every package that it says helps you smoke less. And that's based on the years of clinical studies that the FDA uh, conducted uh, that are very compelling and in the public domain. It all fits within there, what they call their comprehensive plan, 
uh, on harm reduction, and it supports things like vapes, it supports things like nicotine patches, etc. And now it also supports the, uh, the first and likely only combustible uh, cigarette uh, that would get this FDA MRTP authorization in, uh, in our VLN uh, brand that is now on the shelves. And as of Friday, uh, not only has the FDA announced a uh, proposed rulemaking for a menthol ban on uh, regular nicotine combustible cigarettes, which we would uh, be exempt for, uh, but now the Biden administration announced uh, a uh, proposal to move that would force uh, the cigarette manufacturers to drop their nicotine levels to non-addictive uh, nicotine levels, which is uh, right uh, what our technology does. It's uh, uh, It's been denoted that way by the FDA. Now, I understand that you've got some other ventures. You, you alluded to them uh, earlier with hemp, cannabis, and food as well. Yeah, so uh, we've got, we focus on three plants. So we, at our core, we're a plant bio, biotechnology-based company. We focus on three specific plants, tobacco, which is low nicotine, uh, hemp, cannabis, uh, and then also hops. And the, the similarities of the three plants are they're all from what we call the alkaloid family. But the uh, the other similarities, they all contain very rich uh, components that are highly efficacious with humans and animals. In uh, in cigarettes, it's nicotine, or in our case, the lack of uh, the nicotine, the reduced levels of nicotine. But in uh, cannabis, it's cannabinoids such as CBD and CBG and all the ones that are, are popular in, uh, in the marketplace. And in hops, it's hoploids. Uh, so we've uh, focused on modulating those plants, which are very, typ- very typically difficult to uh, improve upon. Uh, and uh, uh, incremental gains often take 10 to 15 years. We can do this cycle in about two years and optimize levels of cannabinoids or hoploids, increase yields, increase uh, quality, all of which is designed for end-use markets that include pharmaceutical, uh, recreational, medicinal, around the world where legislation allows on the cannabis side, but also getting into food and beverage, obviously with cannabinoids and with hops uh, and hoploids uh, as time goes on. So in hops, for example, it gives us the opportunity to create uh, with our partners, uh, license them technology to create smart beers that can help with anti-inflammation, uh, gut health, et cetera. So that's our business model uh, in, uh, in general. Now, I also understand that you've recently made an acquisition, uh, GVB Biopharma. Tell us about the strategic benefits briefly and how this acquisition looks to impact your business overall. Yeah, my belief along is uh, that whoever dominates the science uh, and the understanding of cannabinoids, how they work in the body and can bring consumer confidence both on safety, quality and knowledge about how they operate, uh, would be in a uh, very strong position. Now, we're not a brand company. We, we, our customers are brand companies, and we keep the consumer uh, in mind. So what I had built out uh, at 22nd Century before the GVB acquisition was uh, a value chain going all the way back to understanding how the products work. And uh, through our Canometric Science in Rochester, New York, uh, we're the only group in the world that can uh, uh, study multiple cannabinoids at once in the human system to understand how the receptor science works and be able to tell our customers and consumers, here's how these products are working. And then building out gene editing, uh, non-GMO basis of modulating these plants to optimize the components through our, our key gene technology that we've, uh, we service uh, globally, both in hemp and uh, cannabis. In other words, THC-containing and non-THC-containing uh, product. And then we have breeding expertise and uh, cultivation expertise. That's what we had built out up until then. What we acquired with GVB was they are the leading cannabinoid ingredient supplier in the world. They have a little over 15% of the uh, CBD and CBG marketplace, which makes them uh, number one in the world. And they also have a high-end contract development manufacturing group, a CDMO, uh, and now the combination of all of this gives us the opportunity to service our customers and bring higher quality, higher level of safety, uh, lower cost, uh, because these uh, these plants, these improved strains and this value chain allows for a lower cost and improve the consumer experience. And the, the, the science behind these uh, cannabinoids in particular, and it applies for hops as well, is is very compelling for a health and wellness basis. Jim, would you give us a website where our listeners can learn more about the 22nd Century Group? Sure. Our website is xxiicentury.com. 
and uh, please uh, please feel free to check us out uh, there. Uh, it's a you know, fully uh, up and running facility, and uh, we've been in the public domain under XXII NASDAQ uh, for, uh, for coming up now on a, a decade, and uh, check us out uh, certainly there as well. James, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate it. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with James Mish, CEO of 22nd Century Group. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.